Greetings! Today we're going to install this compact Renogy 100 watt panel with a tilt kit using only VHB tape and a turnabond, drilling no holes on the roof of my RV. Now this is going to be my third solar panel. I'm putting it up front. The two back panels, in case you don't already know, have been installed with VHB tape for two years now. And so I'm going to do the same thing for the third panel up front. And the only real difference here is going to be we're going to use these tilt brackets. Let's go get started. So let me show you the list of ingredients, what we're going to use to put the solar panel up on the roof. Now, first of all, we have a ladder, which is obviously required. We got the Renogy 100 watt compact panel. I bought this in December. You can catch this on my Amazon page. You can actually catch all this stuff on my Amazon page. So we're just gonna go through this now. We got a pair of 10 feet white MC4 cables. I got white so they match the roof because this, uh, these cables will probably be visible from the road. So I wanna make sure they're white. These are the tilt brackets that I got from Pat. Now check this out. Isn't that cool? So they just tilt like that and then you have to use some muscle to compress them. But we're gonna use this installed on the roof. In fact, it'll be more like this but these need to be cut down first. So in order to cut this bracket down so it's not three inches up off my roof, I'm gonna use my brand new jigsaw. I got this brand new Ryobi jigsaw. We're gonna go ahead and cut the brackets with that. I know that's the wrong blade, but that's the one blade they gave me. We got our turnabond tape to cover the brackets when we're done. We got eight strips of seven inch VHB tape. I believe this is the 4850. Uh, if not, I'll correct that on screen. We got some C-clamps to hold down the brackets. We got hardware. I bought this bracket kit not knowing for sure if I was going to use these tilt brackets or not. So that's like my backup plan. If for whatever reason the tilt brackets aren't gonna work, this was like 10 bucks to get these aluminum brackets. I'm gonna definitely use this hardware that comes with it to mount the panel to these brackets here. I got some Clorox spray cleaner to clean my roof. I got 91% isopropyl alcohol to uh, take the chalking off. Basically, this is surface prep. So you use this first, let it dry, then you use this, let it dry, and then you can mount the brackets. Uh, also got a Sharpie because we're going to need to draw lines on the roof so that everything is center. I got my tool kits, I got a set of wrenches, and a set of sockets. One tool I forgot to mention is my Ryobi drill because we're going to need to drill some new holes once I cut these brackets down. So that covers everything we're gonna need. So first step is gonna be to figure out how I'm gonna cut these brackets. Now this is currently what it looks like in its full glory. Now these notches were cut to allow this piece to come down into here and this, I had to reverse this. I, uh, these were donated to me by Pat. Pat put this together and he cut a notch out and I reversed it, I had to cut another notch. But what I need to do is basically cut, you see where this line is, I need to kind of cut these holes out, make these brackets shorter this way in both directions so that when I close this and I put it up on the roof, it's not sticking up like three or four inches because basically it's, stuck, it's sticking up way too high. And I can't use these tilt brackets if they stick up that high. It's just gonna catch too much air on the freeway. So I already have them this, this side disassembled. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these first. Okay guys, here is the finished product. This is just one side. I'm gonna show you how I made it and need to do the other side. Now how this works is that this is in the summer position. So the solar panel lays across the top. This part gets VHB'd to the top of the van. And what we got is I can tighten this once it's in position and that will lock it. So all you need to do is push the panel down. Once the panel's pushed down, I can insert a lock in there and that'll hold it closed. Now, on this side, I'm probably going to epoxy a wing nut or something so that when I screw this in, I, it, I don't have to do anything from the back side because this is gonna be very difficult to access because the pan solar panel's gonna be on top of this. I'm not gonna have any room at all to get my hand in there. So I'm gonna have to probably epoxy some nuts on the other side. And the special feature of this is that I have these three positions here. Summer, fall and spring, and winter. So what this will do is this will adjust this bar to raise higher or lower depending on the season. 
So as soon as I get to a campsite, all I have to do is pull the, the nut, uh, pull these screws out, and I can just pull it up. It'll pop up and hold it there in the wind and everything. I don't have to worry about messing with little bars and stuff like that. Now I could do that, but I found this way probably going to be a lot more cooler, a lot fancier. We'll see how it works out. So my goal today is to take these big giant pieces that were part of the original kit I got from Pat and cut them down to be exactly like the other one. So instead of having three inches of lift off the roof, it'll be more like a one inch lift off the roof and that'll make it a lot more streamlined. And I don't have to worry about the wind when I'm driving, I don't have to worry about the airstream over the van ripping the solar panel off. Now I said yesterday that I was using a jigsaw. Uh, that didn't work out too well. So I borrowed Heidi's. She got a brand new Ryobi kit. She, she saw my tools and the tools she works with at her shop and they're all Ryobi. She liked them so much she went on and bought some. So I've been using this. It's got it actually has a metal blade, a nice heavy duty metal blade. And I've been using this to cut the aluminum brackets. It works quite well. It's a, little, it's a little sloppy though. I can't get perfect straight lines with it, but it's close enough. This is way too high, okay? I need to make this piece into this piece. This is what I did yesterday. It took me quite a long time because I was breaking saw blades and trying to figure out the measurements and drill all these extra holes. So I got it figured out now. So I need to just reproduce this from this. Just making some marks across the bit like this, 12 millimeters, so that I can reproduce this into this piece. So I've already done that. You can see it says 12 and 12. So I drew a straight line all the way across. That's gonna allow me to cut this thing. Cut all those little holes out because I'm gonna drill my own. Cuts a lot better when you lube the blade. Then I just use vice, vice grips to kind of bust it where it needs to be busted. There we go. Okay, you can see the notch there. Now it's time to cut this curve. This allows the bracket to clear the other bracket. So you gotta cut a little curve, cut the tip off so that they uh, don't bump into each other. Yeah, that's close enough. Now, because these brackets are mirror images of each other, I can actually just use the one side bracket to make the holes for the other side of the bracket. So I'm just lining them up back to back and I'm gonna drill the same holes as I did on the other side. And of course, the one time in a month that the neighbor decides to cut his grass, he's doing it today when I'm trying to film. repeat that process for the rest of the holes. And there we go. We have a pair of matching solar tilt brackets ready to go up on the roof. Now I have to do now is I'm gonna wash them with soap and water to get all the WD-40 off. All right, so I got some 100 grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna sand these down all sides because I'm gonna do some epoxying to strengthen a couple of these pieces and I want to have a nice scratched up surface for the VHB tape to adhere to. So I'm going to go ahead and sandpaper this, all four pieces, then I'm going to wash them with soap and water. I'm going to let them dry. Now I'm just taking the burrs off. And I also want to make sure all my drill holes here don't have burrs, because that would kind of suck when you're going to tighten it and you get a piece of aluminum stuck under your finger now. I've had that happen more than once. And then this edge here, which is already smooth because I started sanding it. Basically just getting rid of all the, all the burrs, all the sharp corners. I can't do too much about this because I kind of, <laughs> see I kind of chopped that up pretty good. But make it so that I don't cut my hand on it. Yeah, that's smooth enough. You see I cut this notch out, right? It makes it so that this is not as strong as it should be this way, like if I'm, if I'm trying to bend it like this, you know, it doesn't, it's not as strong as it should be. So I was putting a piece of metal in here, right? What I didn't realize is when the pneumatic thing comes down, it rests on that, and then the holes don't line up anymore for the bracket. So what I'm gonna have to do, kind of move it out like that. And then I'll decide after it's glued 
to just cut this extra piece off, although I don't think I should. I think I should just leave it like that for extra strength. So it'll look something like that. I realize I really don't need to do two nuts on these. I was doing two wing nuts and I was gluing the wing nuts to these holes. And I kind of goofed on that too. So we're gonna take this as a lesson learned. I got some JB Quick. So this stuff cures and well, it sets in four minutes, cures in like an hour. I'll let it sit for a couple hours in the sun and then we'll go ahead and mount the brackets to the solar panel and get the solar panel up there. It's taken me three days just to get this far. That's pretty bad. But the, the, between the heat and like screw ups and all the video footage I have to do, it's really slowing me down. Uh, so yeah, let's move on. For those of you who don't know what JB Quick is, it's JB Well, but it's a fast setting version of it. So it's basically just an epoxy. But this is actually made from metal. As soon as you mix this stuff together, it will start the chemical reaction which makes it begin to harden. And again, it's about 102 degrees right now, so this is gonna, this is gonna act pretty quick. And I'm sure, I'll, I'm sure you guys are frantically typing right now and telling me how I'm doing this wrong. It's okay. We all can't be good at everything, you know. I am not good at everything. I'm not even close to good at everything. This time leaving a nice big gap. That looks pretty good. Okay, here is the finished product in all of its glory, in all of its ugl ugliness, I should say. That does not look good, but it's functional. This is the piece where the solar panel rests. This is the piece that gets VHB to the van, so we'll just kind of fake it like this. So this is sitting on the van. This is in summer position approximately 30 degree angle facing south. So I just obviously just leave it like this all day and night as long as I'm camped in that spot. When it was time to wrap up camp, I just push the solar panel down and then while it's down, I just hold it down with one hand. And with the other hand, I just screw one of these in. This bracket is only an inch tall, which is about the same height as the default Renogy brackets you can buy but this is something I manufactured. Now, one of the additional things I had to do was I had to make this angle cut here. That's why I had to cut that slit in there. One of the other additional things I needed to do was I had to cut, I had to drill a second hole here that allows this nut to slide up and down so that I can adjust this for proper closing technique. So this is summer position. This is uh, fall and spring, and then this is winter. And this is an extra lock so that these holes here this hole up here matches with this hole down here and I can slide one of these through just to temporarily lock it. So I need to make those same adjustments to here. I need to cut this notch at an angle and I need to drill an extra hole up here because you can see this is too close to the edge. It needs to be about where my fingertip is. So those are the two things I'm gonna do here before it gets dark. So the brackets are finally done. We let this cure overnight with the JB Quick. So the, the nut on there is certainly on there really good. So what I have on this side is the bracket mounted to the solar panel. Now what I'm using for hardware is this Renogy kit. This is a flush mounting bracket kit with the sa same exact kit I used for those panels up there. So that's what I used up there. And I wanted to mimic the height of this with these brackets. So I spent a couple of days cutting them down redoing them, gluing them, drilling holes. Uh, finally got to the point where I think this is gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this hardware in here, just like I did on the other side. And then I'm gonna stick this up on the roof and see what it looks like. Since we're keeping track of details here, I want you to note that I have the nut facing down on that side of the panel, facing up on the opposite side. The reason for this, if you don't reverse the nut, it, the, the bolt will bang into the pneumatic. So that's where the bolt is. I have it going this way instead of up and then at the opposite over there. This 100 watt compact panel with my custom made pneumatic brackets. I'm gonna put it up on the roof and see how it looks. And that'll make me pretty much decide where I'm gonna put it. Okay, let's show you what the preliminary look is. So there's what it looks like. That's kind of centered. I don't have lines drawn on the roof yet to get perfect center. So I tell you what, it looks 
way better than it did before and the height is definitely not a problem and it's certainly you can see very close to the roof which is great for aerodynamics but the problem is this big ass gap the way I'm looking at this the roof does curve a little bit there so before I do anything let's move it down to this spot that spot seems flatter Let's see what it looks like down there. Again, the benefit to having it up front is that it's easier to access, easier to clean. You know, I'm gonna have to tilt it every time I camp. So I might even be able to use my step stool or something to get to it instead of having to pull the ladder out. The downside to being up front is that anytime I put a tarp over the front, over these windows, it's gonna be an issue for the solar panel up there. Even if it's tilted up, still be in the way of the tarp. So. Let me move this sucker over here on the front and see how it looks before I start doing anything with the brackets. So that's what it looks like with the panel in the front. Now, it's way better than it was when it was when the bracket was three inches tall, but it does look kind of weird. And let me show you why. See this? That's all the further the bracket can go back before it lifts up off the, the surface. Now this is fairly centered and there is a little bit of a gap here, but I don't know if that would be a real issue with the VHB, probably not. But the thing is, if I do it like this, I'd wanna cut some of this off. Maybe use just these two holes instead of the three holes. Up there is uh, certainly a little more stealth, probably a little more out of the airstream, but it's definitely gonna require me getting my ladder out every time I camp, uh, where this may not. And this might actually be an issue with gas mileage because it's the, the airstream's coming right up over here, right? And it's gonna, it's gonna hit this, this flat part head on. It's certainly not gonna be a good thing. Again, just like the other side, there's not much of a gap underneath, which is good. I mean, there's enough to let air flow in so the panel doesn't overheat, but it's not enough that the wind's gonna catch it and lift it up. So I'm gonna contemplate this for a minute. I think I'm gonna put it up here and just move the brackets in and we'll just do it that way. That's also an additional mess running cables up here because you know, I have a turn -a tape, I can hold it, but it's gonna be kind of sloppy looking. If it's all up there, it's not gonna matter much. you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box here's Heidi trying to fit into the chicken coop she's turning into a chicken hey thank you for watching our video if you liked it be sure to subscribe share and like and we'll see you guys next time say hi Odin. Randall Furnine, Army Golf Guy, Joe Lazaro, Pat.